Do you want to graphically analyze Panda's data frame? If you answered yes, then this video is for you because today I'm going to be showing you a new Python library that will allow you to graphically analyze Panda's data frame. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the Python library that we're going to be talking about today is called Pandas GUI. So you might recall in prior videos, I've talked about Pandas UI and also Bamboo Lib. And so I'll be providing you the links to those videos in the description of this video. And so let's have a look at the Pandas GUI. So here you could install it by typing in pip install Pandas GUI. And the library was just released on October 20th of this year. And let's have a look at some of the demonstration here. So this is the PyPy website. And you're going to be seeing here that in order to install Pandas GUI, you could just simply pip install it. Or if you would like to have the latest version, then you could install it directly from GitHub. Okay, and so here they're telling you how you could generally use the pandas GUI. So essentially you'll be importing pandas as PD, and then you're going to be importing the show function from the pandas GUI. And then you could simply call, and then you could simply use the show function in order to graphically analyze the pandas data frame. And so let me show you that. So you want to fire up your terminal or your command prompt. And so let me open up the Jupyter. Okay, and so this is the Jupyter Notebook. So I can share you this Jupyter Notebook. And so I'm going to provide you this Jupyter Notebook in the description of the video as well. And so here, let's install the pandas GUI. So you could do that as I've mentioned already by typing in pip install pandas GUI into the command prompt. And then after doing that, you could import the libraries in your Jupyter notebook. So essentially you could just run this cell. All right. And then let me run this. So essentially I'll be importing the show function from the pandas GUI library. And then the pandas GUI library also comes in with some data set. So here I'm going to import all of the data set available here from the pandas GUI. And then I'm going to type in show and then as the input argument, I'm going to use the double asterisk and then all data set. And so all of the data set that are coming from the pandas GUI library will be loaded. So here, this is the graphical user interface. And as you can see in the dock here, the icon is a pandas. It's pretty cool. Okay. And so this is the data frame, which is the graphical version. So let's expand this. So all of the data set that we have imported includes the Pokemon, car crashes, Iris data set, MPG, and there is also penguins, tips, Titanic, Gapminder, stock data, and MI manufacturing. So let's have a look at the Iris data set. So here you're going to see the data frame here in the data frame tab. And there are a total of 150 rows. 149 is the index number. And then you're going to be seeing as usual, the four numerical columns here, and then the qualitative label, which is the species of the flower. And you could click on the column and then you could sort the number from ascending or descending. And the great thing about this is that you could also filter the data. So if you click and hold it, you could drag it and move it around. I guess this is the best I can do. Okay, so for the filter here, we could type in, for example, if I want to have simple length of greater than, let's see, what number? Let's have number uh, six. Okay, so let me type in some query here. Let me type in simple length greater than six, and then I'll click on the add filter. And then you'll notice that in the box below, it'll have a tick, meaning that 
the following filter is applied to the data frame. So it's going to show only the data rows that have sleepable length of greater than six. And so we could add more conditions here as well. Let me try species equal to, let's have only versicolor then, a versicolor. Add filter. And so you're gonna be seeing here that only the versicolors are shown. So both condition must be met, meaning that the species should be versicolor and the sepal length should be greater than six. We can even add more here as well. Petal length, let's have it less than 4.6, add filter. And so you're gonna be seeing that the three filters that I have added here resulted in the following rows of data. Okay, so there's index number 51, 65, 68, until 97, which meets all of the three criteria here. All right, let's look at the next tab here, the statistics tab. So this one will give you a general overview of the statistical parameters for the various columns that you have, including the pedal length, the pedal width, the sepal length and the sepal width, and also the species here. So you, you're gonna be seeing the name of the variables and then the data type, the count, the number of unique values in here, and the mean and the standard deviation, and the minimum and the maximum value, All right? So this is under the statistics tab. Now let's have a look at the grapher here. And so you could create various plots as you can see here. Let's try creating a simple histogram. But before doing that, let me remove the query here, the filter, so that we can make use of the entire data set. So for histogram, notice that on the right hand panel below it, you will see that there is the X variable. So I'm going to be showing the histogram for the sepal width. I'm going to drag one of the variables here, and then I'm going to drop it at the X right here. And then I'm going to select species and then I'm going to be dragging it and dropping it in the color. And then I'm going to be clicking on the finish. And therefore I'll be seeing that this is the histogram and it is colored according to the species. And so the species here are comprising of the Cetosa, the Versicolor, and the Virginica. I can even do the facet according to the row or the column. So I'll be selecting the species again, dragging it and then dropping it at the row, facet row. Click on finish again in order to refresh the plot that we have here. And then it's going to be faceting as a row here. We'll be having it faceted into three rows. However, if I would like to facet it according to the columns, I could do the same. I'll be clicking on the species and then I'll be dragging and dropping it onto the facet column. So facet will essentially divide the plots into the various, so let me try it again, sepal width, drag it and drop it to X and then I'll click on species, drag and drop onto the facet column. So facet will allow you to pretty much separate the plots into several plots and it's going to be separated according to the species. So you're going to have one subplot for each of the three species. And then click on finish and then we're going to have it as the column here. Okay, so let me add the colors. And now it has the colors, okay? And make note that the plot here is created by Plotly. So under the hood, Plotly was used to create the plots. So aside from histogram, you could also make scatter plot. You could make line. You can make bar plots, you can make box plot, violin plot, scatter plot, 3D. Let's 
try it out. So this is the 3D scatter plot. You could make heat map, you could make a pie. So let's give pie a try. So for the names, I'll click the species. And then for the values, I'll select the sepal width. Click on finish. And then you get a pie chart. Okay, so as simple as that. So this will allow you to do a quick EDA or exploratory data analysis using the pandas GUI. And so aside from that, you could also reshape your data by pivoting or melting the data as well. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.